Marvel Comics is no stranger to including supernatural elements in their comic books, and I've previously done an entire video dedicated to how the Marvel Universe handles vampires, but did you know that Captain America once became a werewolf in the 90s? Because, well, he did. Because comics. But before we get too far into things, I want to give a big thank you to my fiancé's favorite sponsor, Manscaped. Look, if you're hairy like a werewolf Captain America, then these products are going to come in handy. And while I am a big fan of their stuff like the Lawnmower 2.0, I am especially a fan of their liquid products. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant is especially important for me here in Texas, and also the Crop Reviver is really good for if you don't have time for a full shower, but you need a little quick spritz to make sure that everything is all clean down there. You can get all of this and more in the Perfect Package 2.0, which is going to have everything that you're going to need in order to keep your junk very fresh. If you want to get in on this for yourself, then make sure to use the code COMICD20 at checkout for 20% off and free shipping. Thank you guys so much for the sponsorship, and now, back to the video. So, Captain America decided to take a break from the Avengers in order to find his missing friend and pilot, John Jameson. He's the son of J. Jonah Jameson, a former astronaut, and is also a werewolf because of a magic rock called the Moon Gem. Well, at least he used to be a werewolf before the stone turned to dust after an encounter with Spider-Man. First things first, Cap checked to see if the Moon Gem's dust was still secure. It was not. He then stopped by the Daily Bugle to talk to J. Jonah Jameson to see if he had heard from his son. He had not. With few leads, Steve decided to team up with Dr. Druid, a former Avenger and expert of the occult, and together they investigate rumors of alleged werewolf killings in Massachusetts. Not only did they find a werewolf, but an entire town of them. Yup, it turns out that a bad guy named Dreadmond stole the moon dust, reformed the moon gem, developed a werewolf serum, and turned an entire town into his personal werewolf army. Sounds like something straight out of a D&D campaign. Now, unbeknownst to Cap and Dr. Druid, Wolverine was also investigating the town, but he was defeated and captured. The bad guys tried turning Wolverine into a werewolf, but Logan's healing factor was so strong that he would metabolize it too quickly and revert back to normal. Despite this, Dreadman was still able to brainwash Wolverine and sick him on Cap. This feral Logan swiftly defeated Captain America, captured him, and then Dreadman's evil scientist administered the werewolf serum, giving birth to Cap Wolf. In addition to, you know, being a wolf man, this formula enhanced Steve's already super strength, which allowed him to easily break free from captivity. It's also worth noting that Rogers was injected with an even more potent version of the werewolf formula, which allowed him to stay transformed even in daylight. While all of this was happening, Dr. Druid was investigating a different part of the town, bumping into Dreadmond and engaging him in mental battle, where they kind of just stare each other down. Look, I know there's some super powerful stuff going on here, but this just looks kind of dumb. After getting distracted, Druid is defeated and chained up, around the same time that Cap Wolf fought Wolverine for a second time, but allowed himself to be captured. If you think this was a dumb move, it actually makes a little bit of sense, considering that Cap's mental state had deteriorated after the transformation, but he did still know on a basic level that he wouldn't be able to turn back into a human without the enemy's help. Steve was locked up with several other test subjects, but by using the combat skills that he had retained in his muscle memory, Cap defeats their leader, a mysterious unnamed white werewolf, without much difficulty. Also among these prisoners is a mutant named Wolvesbane, who you might know from the New Mutant series. She teaches Steve how to talk using his new wolf body, which allowed him to rally the other werewolves and escape, even though he willingly went there in the first place. On the way out, Rogers discovers that the werewolf serum is actually made from the blood of a man named Jack Russell, aka Werewolf by Night. At the same time, Feral from the X-Force, who I legitimately thought was just Wolvesbane under a new code name until I read the storyline, was being drawn to the town, prompting her teammate Cable to come after her. Yeah, it really seemed like Marvel wanted all of their wolf characters in one spot for this story. Wait a second, did they add Wolverine to this because they legitimately thought that he was a wolf? I mean, if that can confuse Hugh Jackman of all people, then I guess I could see comic writers being confused by it too. You know, I was doing some work on the wolves and blah 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 and he goes, Wolves? Like to the whole guy. Why wolves? You're playing a wolverine. I go, well, that's not an animal. And he goes, yeah, it is. Like, go to the zoo. 
It was a humiliating moment and three wow. weeks of wasted research. When Captain America's wolf pack finally confronted Dreadmond, the bad dude sliced into the captive Dr. Druid and used his blood to activate the moon gym. This transformed him into a cosmic level werewolf. And he calls himself Star Wolf. Cable finally made it and joined in on the action, but Star Wolf's power was too great even for the combined might of Cap Wolf and Cable. During the fight, the white werewolf rescued Dr. Druid and injected Star Wolf scientists with the werewolf serum, meaning that if she wanted to change back, she was going to need to create an antidote, which I imagine would be difficult considering that the transformation has been shown to lower the victim's intelligence. Try not to think about it too hard, because clearly the writers didn't. When Dr. Druid finally comes to, he frees Wolverine from the mind control, allowing Logan to join in on the fight. Yet, he doesn't end up doing much of anything. He more or less just frees Rogers from some rubble. Using the last of his strength, Cap Wolf was able to get the Moon Gem away from Star Wolf, reverting him back to human form and saving the day. In the maybe 20 minutes of fighting, Star Wolf's scientist was somehow able to make a cure, which was given to the afflicted werewolves. And surprise, surprise, it turns out that the white werewolf was actually John Jameson the entire time. So now that Steve found his friend, you'd think that'd be the end of all of this weirdness, but nope. You see, right as Steve was getting his cure, an evil Captain America suddenly burst in. He's a doppelganger that was created during the Infinity War event about a year prior, complete with a black costume, costume, fangs, and a literally edgy shield. During the fight, the good Cap started reverting back to human form, and despite losing his werewolf strength, he defeated this evil twin who vanishes after the super quick fight. Was there a point to this battle? No. I honestly think they did it just so they could justify having this cover. Anyway, after fully reverting, John quits as Cap's pilot and everything goes back to normal, but if you take a look at the runtime of this video, you'll see that there is still plenty more to talk about. You see, Steve Rogers isn't the only Captain America to become a werewolf. Sam Wilson, aka the Falcon, has also become one twice. Okay, so remember that scientist that was working for Star Wolf that developed the werewolf serum? Well, her supervillain name is is Nightshade, and she was first introduced in Captain America number 164 in 1973. In this issue, she debuted the first iteration of the werewolf serum and used it on Sam, but by the end of the issue, the sun had come out, which reverted him back to human for good. Yeah, there's really not much to talk about here since the entire issue was pretty much just Sam's transformation and his fight with Steve, but the much more exciting bit was decades later, after Wilson had taken up the mantle of Captain America. Sam clashed with Dr. Carl Mollis, a mad scientist that loves to experiment on living beings. During the fight, Sam got distracted and was knocked out, with Mollis also capturing Red Wing, Wilson's bird that he shares a psychic connection with, because comics. When Cap woke up, he found that Mollus had experimented on him and turned him into a wolfman, and he needed his girlfriend, Misty Knight, to save him. The two of them decided to track Mollus down, which leads to one of my favorite exchanges in all of comics. Hey, is that Captain America? He's a werewolf now? A flying werewolf? A flying werewolf and a communist? I liked him before, but that's too far. Sam and Misty found Mollus, beat up his hench creatures, and discovered that a kid named Joaquin Torres was spliced with Red Wing's DNA to become a human falcon hybrid. Also, since Red Wing has a psychic connection to Sam, this kid now does too. Although Mollus was defeated, Sam didn't turn back to human. Plus, since he's not a werewolf, the changes seem to be permanent. This was pretty damn funny, because even though Sam was a lot more articulate than Steve was in wolf form, Wilson still had plenty of problems to overcome, like getting fleas and dealing with his desire to eat trash. This transformation, though, really wasn't that big of a hindrance. I mean, outside of some jokes, the book was just business as normal. I mean, Sam even took down an entire group of supervillains, with the whole wolf thing not really coming up. Even the reversion back to human form wasn't anything all that special since it just happened off-panel, and it's still to this day not really explained how it happened. It's also super weird considering that both Sam and Joaquin were both experimented on by Mollus, but only Sam reverted back to human form while Joaquin is still a human falcon hybrid and is still fighting crime under the code name of Falcon. Why Sam turned back to normal is honestly a mystery that we're never going to get an answer to. And even though this is super underwhelming, 
that's really all I have to say, so this is my super underwhelming conclusion. If you enjoyed this presentation, then you might like the rest of this show. It's called Because Comics, and I take a look at all the crazy, strange, and straight up bizarre things that make comic books, well, comic books. So if you enjoyed this, then I highly recommend watching the rest of the episodes, maybe you'll get a kick out of it. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.